Hi, so quite honestly, this is probably the easiest engine you're ever going to make and you need so few parts for it. So I've got a bit of clear tube here, it doesn't have to be clear, it's just nice to see it working. So a bit of clear tube, some correct tube fittings, I've got four angles and one T and then a couple of copper pipes the same length. And that's all I'm going to need to make this thing. As I say, you can use other pipes, you can use other tubes, other fittings, doesn't matter as long as you have a couple of metal pipes. And these metal pipes form the upright. But all we do with this thing is fit those bits together. Okay, we're halfway through putting it together and you can see how super simple it is. There's one of the copper pipes. That'll be the cold pipe. I've put hose clips on all the joints and I've cut my pipes to length and put these little angles in. Now, that's a lot of mucking about because I want it to look pretty. You don't need to do this. You just put the pipe straight on the hot and the cold, just bend it over, tighten it up with the hose clips, you're gonna be away. But I want something that looks a bit prettier and a bit more durable, which is why I'm going to this trouble. But you don't have to. Now, when it comes to these junctions, all I've done is, where is one? It's around somewhere, there it is. Get an angle, jam it on, bit of tape. Now, on three of the junctions, this one, this one, and this one, you don't need to worry about that, they're gonna be cold. But here is where we're gonna heat, because this is a lump of copper pipe. That heat is going to rise, it's going to get into there, and it's going to melt there. And that'll be a problem issue. But we can solve that by cooling it. What I've got here is a tank fitting. If I jam that on the tank fitting, put that on there, then what I can do is screw a little tank on there. And what I'm talking about here is a tuna fish tin. So we drill a hole in a tuna fish tin, and make a little bath around there, and that will keep that joint cool. Okay, that's it, we're ready to rock and roll. I've filled that with water, that's there. We're gonna point a blowtorch at it here and heat it with the blowtorch. But like I said before, there's a ton of ways you could heat something like this. I mean, one way would be to put a Fresnel lens on and point the sun at it, so it would be a solar-driven engine. Just an absolute ton. But let's get some heat on that and see that thing bounce up and down. <laughs> oh, the double entendres. Flow thick and fast, don't they? <laughs> what I'm going to do is give you a close-up of the piston rising up and down. <laughs> there it goes. There you go. <laughs> a working liquid piston engine. So that was awesome. I mean, that really is one of the simplest engines you're ever going to be able to build. And it's super easy and super cheap. Now, I went to town on this one and it cost me pennies. Like I said before, you just have to put a loop in there. You don't need to put these fancy bendy bits that I put in. And this here, to get that to be a generator, actually, is really easy. I mean, most of the time it's used to pump water. But if we drop a cork in there with a magnet on top, then obviously, as it goes up and down, that magnet is going to move. Wrap a coil around there you have a linear generator. It'll be an AC linear generator. So, super easy to make, super fun, works a treat, and can be used as a generator in a whole range of heat sources, including the sun. What more could you possibly want? Now, they do get more complicated, okay? There's whole bits and pieces about tuning it and that kind of thing. But if you want a basic engine that is just going to run, that's how you make one. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, nip over to TNT, and have a think about being a member.